I am the Red Cyclone! Let's ah! go! You want to make this for the last girl podcast on Twitch TV slash Mark with the Pine? Is that what we doing right now? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. All right. So welcome one. Welcome all to the Pick This For The Last Girl podcast. This is your host, Lee Beans. This is a uh, uh, Do Not Forget Mark with the Pine. Yeah, buddy. Um, we are here with our podcast about making everything in the world of pop culture this week. Mostly gaming uh, information as Tokyo Game Show was at. And now the Giants are getting arrested. Buffalo Bills apparently are poisoned to New York team. They're, that the, aren't New- them. they're the actual New York team. <laughs> they're like, don't you forget about us. They're, they're technically, technically the only New- the actual real New York team. They're actually in New York and the other two are playing Jersey. Yeah, yeah. I see. That's interesting. Yeah. That is. Did um, did New York itself ever have an area that uh, had a stadium? The Giants played in the Polo Grounds up in Harlem. Oh yes, back in the, before ago. the Polo Grounds was there, You're right? And then the Jets played in Shea Stadium. Gotcha, gotcha. So Wait, they were in New York. Whoa. Let me ask you this: How long ago was it like that? Because I know about the Polo Grounds, but I don't remember early, about the Shea late seventies, early seventies. Wow. That's yeah. interesting. And then they moved to Jersey. Gotcha. Well, this is what happens when you're not authentic. Mm. Yep. Um, turns out, turns out, why is it the Brooklyn Nets or more, more New York team than the New York football team? That's messed up. Uh, yeah. But you know what? As Giants fans, they actually at least have championships. At least they win games, not like the Jets. Well, the the, well, the Jets got one championship. It's one of the first championships <laughs> in Jeez. NFL history, but I'm a Jets fan, so hey, we I, get it. I hope we ain't got to do it no more. That's hope. that's what that that's what that is. They yeah. did it once. That's can't like do the, it no that's more. like the New York Knicks. Like, hey, we won. We won one in the '60s, though. Yay! Shout out to the Undertaker for getting his jersey. You saw that? Yeah, that well, was cool. I wonder why they gave him Patrick Ewing though. They gave him 33. Um, that was his number. No, no, in no. College. 34 was Ewing. 33, no, 33 I think was, was Ewing. Oh, 34 was Oakley. My bad. Yeah, 33 was Ewing. Uh, that was his number in, in college. I mean, he played college ball was 33. Interesting. I did not know that. And he's Undertaker, so what Patrick Ewing going to do? He's going to be upset because he ain't got no rings. Yeah. That's what he's going to do. Undertaker's and his guy. knees are bad. Exactly. Undertaker still beat his ass. They probably just going to talk shit about how, man... It sucks being tall. Yeah. My knees, they're gone. Yeah. I don't know where they went. Somewhere under the hoop. You know, he got fat too, so that's where his knees went. <laughs> oh, that's what Ewing was done before he even left, dude. Yeah. He used to play games with his knees iced the fuck up. Yeah, that was, that's, that's like the, the old school center. It was painful center. to watch. Old school center has always had like ice on their knees. Mm-hmm. They look like twigs. No, well, he was a big dude, but just like... The when you see your man, choice. when that's the man you got to depend on, yeah. and his, his knees are already wrapped game one, you're like, oh my God, how are we going to make it to game seven? <laughs> game four. Game four, let alone game seven. Because you know Jordan ain't going to let us take it. <laughs> Jordan greedy. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. Shout out to the, the old school Knicks, the 90s Knicks. Y'all ain't win no championships, but it's all right. <laughs> yeah. Brooklyn looks like it's having more of a promise this season this year. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you know you should check out um, Peter. Pete What's that? Mo- uh, Peter Moore did an interview about the twenty fifth, the twentieth anniversary of Dreamcast. And isn't he like? All right, Peter Moore the head was of EA, or yeah, one of the heads. Right of now, he's the head of EA Sports. He was the head of Xbox. Mm-hmm. X- I the remember. Original Xbox. He used to be the head of. Wasn't he like the head of? Um... And no, Dreamcast. no, that was. Oh, yeah. oh. And he was really? the head of Dreamcast, yeah. Wasn't he with... No. I just remember... The only thing I can really remember about Peter Moore 
is the GTA tattoo. Remember that from no. E3 when he, he pulled up the Halo. sleeve? No, no, but he did one for GTA yeah. when GTA oh, 4 okay. came out. He had the he had the note, the Roman numeral 4 yeah. on his arm for GTA when he announced on the GTA 4 is coming to the Xbox 360. Yeah. What? <laughs> Uh, he did Halo as well. He did Halo too. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, P. Moore. He, he was the one that was behind. The, he was one of the main dudes on Dreamcast. Mm-hmm. Um, he talks about like how which just had his anniversary last yeah, week. Nine nine ninety nine. Twenty years old, and that's still one of my favorite systems of all time. Did you know? I uh, heard a uh, shout out to VGA. It, um. Video game apocalypse. Yeah. On the podcast I listened to, I because of them I realized that the Dreamcast, the Dreamcast lifespan was literally only a year and a half. So, all that amazing time I had playing a, yeah. a Dreamcast, that system was already dead. Yeah, because they they gave up once the PS2 started like getting, getting, some momentum, because it, it was the top selling system for the first two years while the PS2 was out, like the first year anyway. It, it had got killed games. by bootlegs. Oh yeah. Oh, it got murdered by bootlegs. I can't, I can't, get, I can't deny. Like I, I was one of the people that's. Got yeah. A lot of I bootlegs. mean, listen, Chinatown, New York Chinatown back in the day was a spot to go if you wanted some cheap Dreamcast games. Quite dollars. I had a buddy that worked in the one in Mott Street. I knew him that from high school, and he used to give me games for like two dollars. So, that sounds so about right. I used to leave my, I used to leave there with twenty games. I didn't even know what the fucking games were. I got fucking Pepsi Man like three times. I didn't know what I was getting into, but I was gonna play it. I got like, I got. You remember Thrill Kill? I, I, I got, I got that randomly. He used to just give me random games. He's like, yo, try this out, try this out, and try this out. Like, all right. And like, yeah. Did I ever? Me. Did you ever? Did it work? Cause you had the chip or? I had one. I got my so I, mean, I bought, Kill. Kill. so when I got my Dreamcast. Uh, no, no, the Rocco because that was not yeah was not Dreamcast. I had I had my PS PlayStation modded. Yeah. No, I'm talking about Thrill Kill specifically. That was not. It was PlayStation. That was a PS that was a PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah, I had a, I had a, I had my system mod, but also when I bought the Dreamcast, I bought it from him. I bought the systems from him, and he gave me it with the chip and boot disc. Did so, you get to try? Did you get to try it? Yeah. Do you remember it? Because that game was interesting. It was weird. Do you remember the midget? Yeah. That was like two, two, two halves. Yeah. But, but they were both the top half <laughs> together at the torso. Yeah. And that character specifically, they had a Ken and Ryu alternate costume where one half was Ken and one half was Ryu. That was so <laughs> disturbing. That that game was that game. You know what was funny is that that was the Wu Tang and fight engine. It, they turned it into it, yeah, yeah, to salvage it, which was a <laughs> weird decision. It was a weird decision, but yeah, there was there was a lot of crazy times. But yeah, the Dreamcast, yeah, you could just blame Chinatown itself for the demise of the Dreamcast because the bootleg. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, man, it was so easy. Yo, everyone Although the online it. games didn't work, no. I tried because they were tied to like an ID for each yeah. game. So I had a bootleg copy of PSO. Couldn't play that. So yeah. I had to get the real one. Yeah. And I loved that game every day until the that was, second one came out. That was the first like really working online system on a system. The first one with mass appeal because yeah. if you dig that, into... That actually worked. No, no. If you dig into uh, what's the one for Super Nintendo and Genesis, it sucked. Like that one actually worked. Like the one for it Super had, Nintendo was terrible. It had the the net gauge. Damn. No, not that not one. Not net gauge. X, yeah, fuck. It X was something. Yeah, I know what you're talking X about. Split, you put the damn you put the the phone cord X-Band. inside the X band. X band. You put the phone cord in the damn cartridge and you put the cartridge on top. It it was terrible. It had specific applications, but the best the best thing for was to download the games which i didn't even know about yeah that's the only thing that really was like worth it worth it apparently if you look at to the history of it now there's people who have made like homebrew service for that shit and i guess they're still they're still actually out there yeah it's crazy <laughs> just like dudes still out there playing like nba jam online or something like that yeah. like what but that's like weird. to in the main stage like that was the first like full online 
capabilities and stuff like that to play online, like football with each other and things like that. Ahead of his time. And yes. um, it was Microsoft that did the online servers. It was built on a Microsoft system. It Mic- was, uh, yeah. Windows Millen- ME. Yeah. It's Millennium is what it was called. It was, um, honestly, it, 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 oh, I say it was probably the origin of the Xbox. What? what later will become the xbox well, down the road there's they rumors about took it the same, they kind of took everything the Dreamcast did and just put it higher there was if you and peter I don't moore know if you remember and peter moore was behind remember. it too. i don't know if you remember g4 tech tv yeah i remember they had the story of the Dreamcast on there and they had the the u.s head of the of sega at the time and he divulged a lot of stuff and i think during that interview they also well, he had given some information about uh, Microsoft was very interested in working with them. And that the one thing that for sure influenced the Xbox besides the online was the controller. Yeah. That's why it kind of, it has legacy buttons. The color yeah. scheme of the Dreamcast buttons kind of lives on with the Xbox controller. Yeah, it still does. Yeah. It is kind of like Xbox was very smart not to jump on the ship. Yeah. Because they knew that shit was going was going down. I don't know. I don't care what you tell me. Xbox knew. They were like, yeah, we want to learn from you, but we don't want to work with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that system lasted a year yeah. strong, and the other half of the year was just slowly fading and dying out in the wake of I do not believe it. I, they had no way to patch that out. That system was dead. All that yeah. bootlegging killed it. It's unbelievable how bad that was. Like you can't sell, you can't sell uh, software when nobody wants to buy your software. That's true. Like the system was discounted to like mad cheap. You could buy a Dreamcast towards the end for like a hundred bucks, easy. But well, like, the crazy thing dude. is, there's still games coming out for it. People are still developing games for Dreamcast. Uh, if you go to like yeah, video games in New York, crazy, dude. Yeah. If you go to video games in New York, they have like brand new games for Dreamcast that uh, small developers have made. I think the last one was like last year. There was yeah. like some Japanese shooter that came out of Japan. Yeah. Which I heard like that's one of the things, you know, because of the, the board, it was yeah. actually made on something called Naomi Hardware, which was. Uh, no, the reason it has so many very accurate fighting game ports is because the hardware was essentially one to one with what they were using in the arcades. Yeah. So Marvel Two, um, Virtual Fighter game, like I think only had, that's the interesting thing. I think I only had one Virtual Fighter game. Yeah. But everything else that was on there, like um, what's that Project Justice? Um, yeah. Third Strike, even though apparently it's a bad port, a Third Strike, if you ask some people, but that's why it has such accurate ports. Mark of the Wolves, yeah. um, Last Blade 2, like a lot of super accurate games. So uh, The Darkstalkers, I remember being on there, the Darkstalkers 3, I think. I never saw it. And then uh, I remember the Power Stone being down there. Um, you had like the perfect, like, home console version of like house of the dead and mm-hmm. had, uh, that's... yeah yeah a lot of crazy shit and then not so forget like, not... crazy taxi i would say yes and then don't forget all the weird games like yeah. typing of the dead um space channel 5 seaman choo choo rock seaman yeah with the voice of little nimoy as the narrator yeah i, I actually like the space like channel like... 5 yeah but that was a weird other game yeah and it also has michael jackson in it so yeah, some people two. will not play it <laughs> Part two had Michael Jackson in it. Shoot, shoot, shoot. So, uh, it was an inter- and some of the Amigo was another one. Yeah, not a conventional game. Yeah, I had I had Funko. But no, I had the Maracas. And apparently they are very expensive. Still, yeah, like I heard they, they were cheap. Yeah, which is like that's cool, but damn, that sucks. Cause as a collector, it sucks to pay hundreds of dollars for some Maracas. Yep. Uh, that's why I, I cut my collecting on certain things. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like when it comes to like video games and stuff like that, I, I, I kind of like went, I kind of cut my collecting of games down a lot because it's ridiculous. Like, to just how much money a lot of these things are. Like, I'm still looking for a Turtles Hyperstone Heights, 
and mm -hmm. I would not get it cheaper than like sixty five dollars. And I'm like, I'm not gonna pay sixty five dollars for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, unless it's like mint on fucking encased with plastic that has never been sealed, then I'll pay sixty five dollars. But I'm not paying sixty five dollars for a game that's Open out game. the case that cart. you probably touched my touched like re fucked around with it. Uh, probably has your kid's name on it or your name when you were a kid on it. And yeah, I'm not spending. Just probably falling downstairs. Yeah. Just stepped on. Yeah. Because I have every other turtle game. That's the only one I'm really missing is that one. That's the only one. See, I, I, I the games I collect like for the retro wise is games from my childhood. Games that I remember having such a, a connection to and turtles, turtles in time, turtles Hyperson Heights, uh, project uh, the pro uh, Man projects, the turtles arcade two, uh, turtles one even because I played it, I finished it, and it was fucking hard as shit. But I finished those. But those are the games that are connected to my life, like especially with Ninja Turtles. Wise, because I'm such a huge Turtle fan as well. So, Hyper mm -hmm. on Heights. I want to. I just want. Honestly, I just I want a complete uh, game. I want the case and everything because I just want it for my collection. Because I have the box for Turtles in Time. I have the box for Tournament Fighter. I have the boxes for the NES2 and uh, my hand projects. I paid maybe thirty dollars, twenty five dollars, or I found loose car, uh, loose boxes. Like this guy had a rubber band full of boxes, and he was selling boxes. Like he made them, but they looked just like the real ones. And I think your bucks. And I was like, oh, it's cool anyway. It looks nice in my collection. That's yeah. why I buy it. Yeah. Did he make one for Hyperstone Heist or no? No, because remember Hyperstone Heist, the Genesis games were in the hard case. Oh, so you mean he was making Super Nintendo yeah, NES the car, box? Yeah, the, the cardboard. Cardboard. Ones. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So, well, well, he could have made the later Genesis boxes because yeah. Genesis had some games that came in that. You remember X Men? It yeah, had like yeah. a sleeve. Yeah, it came in the the, the cardboard boxes because they stopped using the plastic ones. But Hyperstone Heights came out during the time when it was the hard case. Uh, yeah, it was still a black case game. I remember. Yep. Yep. Ah. Yep. Uh, Still, it gets a bad rap. Yeah, it's missing a stage, but they they changed it. Nostalgia is a hell of a thing. That's yeah. a that game plays fun. No, like people say bad. people say that this, the other game is superior because they want to pick a side. So, Seriously, either one of those games is fine. So I played both of them. I actually played them both recently. Mm -hmm. Graphic and sound wise, Sega has the upper hand. Really? I think Sega looked better. Like the colors were more vibrant and the sounds the sound quality was a lot better the only thing that the sega didn't have was the the detail and stages like the super nintendo one had the super nintendo one had like it went it went into the time and shit I mean, this one did not it just went it was in the cities and stuff like that they were in the sewers and you fought a lot of the same villains and that was the problem with the hyperstone heights one the, the turtles in time you had more variety of villains you don't get that that cool stage with Krang, right? No. You're right on the like, hoverboard and stuff. No, no. Yeah. That's that's like the one picture in my in my head from uh, Charles of Time that I just remember, like because I never owned the actual cartridge. I played it on an emulator. Yeah. Like way way later. Yeah. But I always remember there was a picture in game magazines and it showed Krang floating in the air on like that futuristic highway. Yeah. It's always dope. So. Yeah. There's minor differences, but like, seriously, it's not that bad. It's no. not like, it's not like the the bad version of the the remake. Have you ever played the remake of um, Charles what was? In Time? Yeah, the remake of Turtles in Time, yeah. the Ubisoft. Yeah, yeah, I, I have it. It's it's off. It's it's really off, and it just it has feels like weird. Lag. It has like button lag, and yeah. I, that was one thing I noticed. You know, okay. I figured that out because that game had a, a huge release because they made like press releases about that. Mm -hmm. I think it was for the anniversary. And it was for the movie. It was during, for the movie. Yeah. Okay. It was during the, the movie. All right. So they so, were making a big ass deal, yeah. and I remember Ubi put out. This is this is almost unheard of for a just a straight up digital game. Yeah. But then again, maybe not back no, then no, because no. I think Actually, about three sixties. No. no, it I was during, during the summer of the Xbox game summer of arcade. Yeah. Yeah, I think Mad Games had demos. And that game had a demo. I played that demo and I 
press the button to attack and I notice button lag in a tur- in a 2D action game. I'm like, yeah. No. Can't so, do it. So it did uh, so the year before that the uh, the original arcade game came out and it was and that part was fun. The, it was part of the Xbox Summer Summer Arcade. And then yes. they did a Summer Arcade Part 2 and they added that into it. Like that then, that first one was fine. I oh, have I have it. I can still play it now. Yeah. It's 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 good. The first one was great. Like again, it was the original part of the arcade, but we never actually got the original part because we got the NES game. So if we actually yeah, looked at the arcade and then go into the NES game. It's like, what the fuck. Well, <laughs> it was still fun. I, like, I still enjoyed the hell out of it. But like, but I, the, yeah, I want the arcade game. I don't want. That. Yeah, you don't want the NES. Game. I, the agree, NES I would agree with you that it's mystifying to a lot of people to to, to split. But by the time that came out, MAME was already a thing. And yeah. most arcade games, like, a lot of people played through MAME. Like, yeah. after, I want to say after the PS, PS2 era was when yeah. MAME started to thrive. And yeah. having been on the, at the ground floor of that community when it got, like, really started and whatnot, yeah. like, I realized that's because there were so many uh, games like t- that version of Ninja Turtles. The arcade version of Turtles in Time, the um, arcade version of Alien vs. Predator by Capcom, the yeah. Shadows of Mistara, which was Dungeons and Dragons. Like, there's a lot of those games that were arcade only that either they came out on a system in Japan. Like, um, I hear there was a Japanese version of one of the, the Dungeons and Dragons games, but I'm not sure which one. But fuck that. I'm not buying a Saturn to play that shit. Yeah. So, I'm playing it on me. Yeah, and bef- that was before they got the arcade, the internet working very well. But like, that was one of the top games. Yeah, that and Turtle Time were like, yeah, like one of the ones like, if anybody ever gave you a pack and said, "Hey, try Mame," those two games almost one hundred percent were on there, which was yeah. cool. So like, I, I can see what you mean, and also having that very vivid experience in my mind from having played them in Mame. Yeah, I could definitely get, say it again. That Ubisoft version of the game was bad. Yeah, it was bad. bad, bad. And it, it was crazy is the fact that um, it was the it was a port of the, the actual arcade too. Mm-hmm. So it didn't have Slash. It didn't have Bebop and Rocksteady. Mm-hmm. It didn't have like the extra characters that the SNES one had. The SNES one had the bonus characters. Or even yep. arcade didn't have them. Yep. Um, even like the Hyperstone Heist had Tatsu and uh, the other ones didn't have. Yes. One of them added, didn't, is Super Shredder always in that game? Yeah. Okay. He's the boss of both, both games. No, one of them had like, didn't one of them have a, an extra fight with Shredder? I think the, the Hyperstone Heist has an extra phase. Like the first part of that is an extra fight with Shredder. I'm not nah, sure. I, Charles and Time does. They have the one oh, that he's okay, in, the, okay. in, the, in the robot. Gotcha, he throw, he gotcha. had to throw people at him, and then he have a fight yeah, with him yeah, as yeah. a small shredder, and then you fight him as the big uh, super shredder. Okay, so that's the one. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep, I, so, oh. I love turtle games. Hmm. Anyway, shout out to the, arc- the um, arcade. We missed the arcade games. Yeah. Um. Yeah. They can come back as barcades, but they also have you have you been to any of the pinball arcade? Well, you said this one right across the street. Yeah. <laughs> It's literally like right across from my house. I just never been to it. Okay. Okay. But so uh, I'm, I'm I'm getting more interested in listening to the podcast in New York talk about like, yeah, they're not bad, and hearing how many people I didn't know have a real positive affinity for uh, pinball machines. Yeah. Like I just wouldn't think it nowadays, you know. Jericho owns like a bunch of them. Oh, that's cool. He's a he's a big Kiss fan, so he has the, the oh, Kiss, that's a kiss pinball machine. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I I never got really like big into pinball. I think it's before my time. And a lot of people were like a little older than me or more pinball because that was their thing. But I never got into it. I could play them. I have fun playing them. I remember when the fucking uh, for Windows ninety eight came out and they had that pinball machine, the pinball game. I always played it all the damn time. Other than oh, that, okay. like I never got into pinball like that. You know. The interesting place I got there's two places I got into pinball, uh, Coney Island, because okay. they had pinball machines, and I really got into like the Terminator Two machine at uh, Chinatown Fair. Yeah, okay. Because they had that. I think they had Adams Family, and one other one that was like really a uh, commercial. Yeah. And something about it, just like those really big, st- like 
the ones that have all those the bells and whistles the ones that have the screen that tells you to look be you know look out for this yeah and or has voices and said thing like i think it, i think it did say i'll be back and whatnot yeah like it was it was pretty silly and i liked it um but, i remember going to the the video game con like not last year the year before they had um that was in the original place and they had like uh, half the room was full of uh, pinball machines. They had the the Simpsons pinball. And that, that's the one I played. Mm, I and never you hear all played. Like, Hi, caramba! And, and you hear all those Damn. words and shit like that. It's actually really cool. Okay, uh, maybe next year we all go to that that convention because I actually like that convention. It's small, it's nice, mm-hmm. it's easy to do things. A lot of free games that to play. Okay. It's a good art. It's a good con. It's a good. Oh, good I con. missed you know, this year. You remember? The, you remember what it's called? A uh, video game club. Oh, this, okay. It's yeah, called A Video Game Con. Yeah, it's in. It's usually in Jersey. Um, dude, last time they did it in the the Meadowlands uh, Convention Center, which wasn't that great because it wasn't. It didn't have as many arcades as it usually has. But mm-hmm. it went back to the old location, in which they usually have a gymnasium full of arcades and pinball machines. Then they have a, another room that's a full like a gym, a gym that's full of like console systems all connected and also with tournament gaming and all that stuff and then they have the retail people and shit like that too oh wow nice that's so it's, awesome. it's, a, it's a nice con it's a nice small con it, it has a lot of people that go there I know a couple of the cosplayers that go there uh, like Luna Star I know her for I knew her for a while she did you there because she's a Jersey chick and stuff like that and a couple of mm-hmm. people like, I've seen the cons before they did you are there um, Jenkins me Jenkins and Julia went to the first one that they did a couple of years back okay. and it was nice it was a nice con um, definitely recommend it uh, it's Luigi in September like the second week of September Luigi that's Luigi where they they aim for mm-hmm. it's every year they've been doing it every year since Nice. Good stuff. That's good to hear. So, uh, what's up with the Tokyo Game Con? Uh, uh, yeah, the, the TGS, TGS Tokyo Game Show, which is a gigantic, uh, kind of like an E3 for Japan. Yeah. That's where Japan goes to basically demo uh, most of the upcoming games, show a bunch of trailers off. Uh, I know you showed me the Ring Fit Adventure. Yeah. For the Nintendo Switch, which is their new their new fitness thing they're coming out with. Yep. Um, that looks hilarious, but I guess it works, right? Yeah, you strap some joy you know, you and hold you know, those big the, plastic. Nintendo always risk risk they, they take risk when it comes to like the fitness things, and this is not the first time they've done it, and it was a success because even though that that balance board was successful in a way. Hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, the thing they made for I think it was the second thing they made for the Wii, the, the monitor. Yeah. That didn't take that didn't take off. Yeah. But I think it did spawn a whole a whole uh, way of thinking with with the Fitbit Fitbits and whatnot because that was before all the tracking uh, fitness equipment was yeah. a thing. Yeah. So who knows? Who knows? But Nintendo know. the, uh, Nintendo's trying to get the casual fans now. They got the hardcore gamers because they bring in Zelda, they bring in Smash Brothers, they bring in all the other things and all the other ports that they bring in. So you're bringing your hardcore gamers back in. Now you're looking for the casual fans, like uh, people that will buy the paraphernalia, the, the paraphernalia with the, 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 the watch. They're gonna do like a hula hoop game. That is too small to put around a human being. Well, they're gonna do a new one. They're gonna make a bigger one and you're gonna do hula hoop. That you put around a baby. <laughs> Because no, a grown woman cannot, or a grown man cannot put that around their waist. I see it. That yeah. lady's like, I am driving, but I am not. I'm actually yeah. steering this one-eyed monster. It yeah. is this game. But Nintendo always has does shit like that. Look at the the cardboard thing they did like a couple years ago. Oh, Labo? Yeah. yeah. And it's, it was a thing. It's a thing. It's it was not a, a popular thing. thing, but it's a thing. It's there. It's a thing. It was overpriced cardboard. It was a nice idea, but in execution it was actually like Man. this is kind of uh price to reward yeah i feel because that was like 60 bucks for a lot of that for like a set of that yeah. and then it was more to get the entire kit together and it's just like who realistic is realistically is gonna do this Man, thing and are they gonna ass support it? that's Man, the thing nintendo got a bunch of motherfuckers <laughs> a bunch of cardboard i'm just saying <laughs> The thing I feel bad about it is when you yeah. buy something like that for a year, 
and yeah. they never support it. No, they had a couple of the games. Uh, they have little things that you can add on. They like they added like the, the thing to play Mario Kart with it and things like that. But yeah, no one's gonna put the freaking cardboard thing on their freaking head to use it as a VR. Yeah, no one. It's, no. it's nice for five minutes. Yeah, not for a sixty dollar purchase. No, and to be every day. But if you have a screaming kid in your back in your back ear wanting it, then you're like, oh, hey, whatever. <laughs> yeah, until they rip because <laughs> it's cardboard yeah, yeah. Um, it's cardboard there's a lot of things that well not really a lot there are a few big things that I got out of the Tokyo Game Show this year yeah um I was most impressed by the the continuing gameplay that they showed of Final Fantasy uh, 7 Remake the big news is that they announced that classic mode, which is the old school Final Fantasy, uh, where the, the, the ATB gauge actually matters a lot more. Okay. Whereas you wait your turn, you strategically pick out who does what, and it, it plays more like a classic RPG. Um, but they show, I don't know what tech they're using. And this makes me scared for the, anybody that has a base PS4 like me because co- there's games like Control that are pushing the envelope of what these systems can do Yeah. and unfortunately the, the developers of certain games like that are kind of losing sight of hey man there's a user base that's like 80 million strong more than two thirds of those are base units what are you doing? stop your shit why are you making these games that don't run on these systems? Yeah. before it's dead it's not dead yet so i'm kind of scared of how that's gonna run because if you want to be amazed look at the presentation and watch when the guy when the i think he's the producer um is it the producer or the, the director of the series watch when he enters uh active time mode and you look at the characters everything is still moving and it slowed down to like, I don't know, not even a fourth, maybe like one eighth speed. Yeah. And you see the bullet come out of Barrett's gun in slow motion. And then you see the bullet hit the enemy. And it's like, oh my God, this is beautiful. Mm-hmm. I cannot believe this is a real video game in motion. Yeah. And it just makes me wonder how it's going to run. And I think that's probably why they're doing it in chunks. There's probably no way they can make a full game with all the chapters yeah, at one time. Like, again, I have to stress, Final Fantasy 15 was 100 gigs. Yeah. <laughs> After all the, it was 100 and something gigs. That's ridiculous. And this is an evolution on that engine. You can see where it takes inspiration, where you can run around and the way the combat flows when you use the active mode. Yeah. It's like Final Fantasy 15, except a little, uh, it looks chunkier and what i mean by chunkier is it feels like everything has a little bit more weight to it yeah which is good that gives it that action rpg feel which will keep people interested not to mention that the games doesn't seem to be um hand holding like they show the demo boss and it's the first boss in the game and it looks like people are going to be complaining because yeah. i the way it looks is that you have to use your brain sorry to say it but in 2019, games that make you use your brain usually get bitched about because people, the muscle where you have to strategize seems to have been lost. Yeah. And I can tell people are going to be like, it's Final Fantasy VII and New Dark Souls. I, I can just see it. <laughs> people are going to cry. And they're going to say, oh my God, this game is so hard without using uh, the slow-mo. Yeah. And then you're going to, and then you, I'm going to see people poly Japanese players doing all types of super complex stuff because also within this demo you you get the sense that there is so much more that they cannot show you yet because it would blow your fucking head off like I'm serious this seems like because they let you not only control cloud in this highly detailed you know game they let you control well for the demo purposes they let you control Barrett and what i'll get to later is they actually show you tifa and Aris fighting it looks amazing and they all play differently 
Yeah. So what I know the game is gonna do is force you to use the strengths and weaknesses differently according according to the battle. Yes. Cloud is a big melee guy. They said he gets his gate his ATB gauge filled faster because he uses close up attacks, which means it's the more times you hit the enemy, also the faster your gauge goes up. So Cloud and Tifa are gonna be like acting like this, you know, every few seconds because they need to do their melee. Yeah. Um and then whereas characters like Barrett their gauge fills up slower, so they do special moves and attacks slower because they're further away using his his bullets from his chain gun, his arm gun. And Aerith, when they show her, she does this really cool, like, ar- not acrobatic. It's, it's like dancing. Yeah. She literally is dancing with her staff and throwing, like, magic out. And then she converts that into, like, different types of explosions, or she can do her limit break, which lets her do the, the, the familiar, like, team heals, resurrection, status prevention, and all that stuff that, you know, for her class, which is basically a white mage slash summoner. Yeah. Um, so I know right off the bat that the game is not what it used to be. Not to, to be quite frank, Final Fantasy VII was easy because they made the game in a way where you could you could really focus on certain things and take people out with any character. You could make every character do every job. So that's how that works out. And this one is like they're, they're carving specific niches for each character. Um, so that might be a real, a real problem for people. But all in all, it looks beautiful. That music is a thing of beauty. They went back and I said they they took the songs they had before and they really went in. They really went out of their way to not replace the old music. They went back and like, I guess you want to say remastered it. But again, it's like they took the old songs and they figured let's update it, not get rid of it, not change everything. Like you can hear so much familiar music. Even when you, even when they're standing and explaining things and not moving, and you hear the music creep in, it's like, oh, I remember that. That's that's so good. Like this is gonna be so on so many people's game of the year list when it comes out. I I know they're gonna support it. It even has a menu that ha- that says DLC in the game. So here's that. Um, but Jesus Christ, that second boss fight that they show. Where you fight the the monster in the sewers with Aris and with Aris and um, Tifa, and you, they summon Ifrit, dude, that shit blew. It. If you had socks on, it got blown off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you get to see Ifrit be summoned, actually come out, and they 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 show that it's not going to be like Final Fantasy VII summons, which was you expend magic, the summon does a move, that's it. And this one. I guess a gauge goes up and then you summon the particular summon. In this case, it was Ifrit. And they are acting like they do. I don't know about 15. I didn't get to the summons in that game. So I don't, I'm not familiar with that. So it might be the same. But when you see that he has a health bar, he has moves to pick from, You, can, I guess you can just let him do what he wants. And then he builds up a gauge to get his his limit break which is like a giant attack which you know which everybody used to from a summon you summon them they do a giant attack they peace out you know this one actually has the summon as a member of the team which very much reminds me of final fantasy 10 and it's like oh man this is this is turning into a love letter of all the things about final fantasies that i liked so i am extremely happy to see it so i I encourage anybody to look at the GameSpot Japanese coverage that they have um, with this super excited young girl with blue pigtails just mm-hmm. just geeking out over everything. Like yeah. it's not in English, but they do have a version that is uh, narrated by one of the ladies that as she's she's giving her overview in English, also on GameSpot. So look for that. It's amazing, really good shit. I can't wait. I know it's only one chapter. But they show they're they're hitting the notes. They have the part where you dress up Cloud as a woman to get into the um, the golden saucer. They have the part where you have to beat the dude to get the squats. I mean, beat the dude by doing squats to get the pieces for the for the outfit. Yeah. 
and they show the squat mini game and it has this awesome remix of the fight music it's just like jesus they spared no expense like the original game it was not a, it wasn't a grand affair it was just a little thing you press buttons in time and if you won you won you got the little item this one is like a damn straight up like it reminds me of yakuza it really like i'm telling you watch the footage it you'll start instantly you'll think about it because you'll okay. see the dude and they put personality and the guy you're playing against he falls on his ass while doing the squats it's hilarious yeah it's really good like all in all they're putting not only are they using the budget because it looks amazing not only are they going for the music because it sounds amazing not only are they putting the character touches that the game had which is what people don't understand why people like the game Yes, it was blocky little characters, but Final Fantasy VII has so many little quirks to it with the characters. Yeah. And, I, and I mean, not just the playable characters on your team, just the world you interacted with was full of very varied and sometimes weird and eccentric people. Yeah. And it looks like they have not forgotten that. And that's what has me excited. Not just that it looks good. I don't really care that it looks good. Because I remember the PC mods of 7 a few years ago, and they made it look essentially like mm, a little less, uh, maybe about the same fidelity as the PSP game. Okay. Because remember, it was a remake of an old game, so people basically up it for HD, and they changed the models a little differently. But it reminded me of the Final Fantasy Crisis Core, the way it looked. Okay. So... The graphics isn't the thing that's selling me. It's the fact that they went all in with the little details. That's why I like it. That's what I'm looking forward to. Now, if, if it feels good to control, that's the last thing to figure out, you know, once you get it in your hands. But yeah. so far, I'm excited. Super that's excited. still set for January, right? Uh, no. March 3rd. March 3rd. 2020. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I know after that trailer, I know a little someone named... Steven that was extremely happy. That's yeah, all he plays. Also, yes. Yeah, because that's all he plays. He plays chat RPGs. That's all he plays. So yes. yeah, I know he's extremely happy, excited for it. Mm -hmm. um, so you show you show me the the trailer for Guilty Gear. That was pretty dope. Yes, that's another thing. I'm. Well, Scott Steiner has different ideas. Scott Steiner, um, you haven't mentioned him, so he's a little angry. He's part he just of can't help it. <laughs> He's part of the Final Fantasy 7. He is. He's the an fantasy. <laughs> He's the fantasy part of Final Fantasy. <laughs> Did you see these arms? These arms will make any one of these these skinny pencil neck geeks jealous. And Aerith, she wants <laughs> to be with me because I'm a freak. I'm a genetic Big bad freak. Booty daddy. You want to see me take down <laughs> Sephiroth? Look at the largest arms in professional <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> Yo, um, we need Scott Steiner to star in Star <laughs> Yeah. He's, well, he's gone. Just, yeah. with his sound, just, just with sound clips from him. Mm -hmm. of his random I would matches. love to see sound, uh, Scott Steiner versus Sephiroth. There just talking to you. There you go. Scott Steiner versus Pissing. Goku. Goku? What the fuck is a Goku? I'll show you these arms and I'll tell. What's it? Chi I'll, make, I'll make Chi Chi come <laughs> home with a real man. Like, all right. Big booty daddy. That's what he is. Don't, don't forget it. He will make sure you don't. Won't let anybody else forget it. That's for damn sure. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah it's about Guilty Gear. gear. Yeah, can't wait. Sick. They confirmed May. She has a brand new design. Uh, I don't know what the game is called. If it's Guilty Gear. It's Guilty Gear. Three. Guilty, no, Gear, Guilty Gear. Third two. I don't. No, it doesn't Guilty have gear. enough. Yeah. Just yeah. It just says Guilty Gear. Yeah. It's just Guilty Gear. So, for now, it doesn't have a subtitle, which I wonder if it's a reboot. It doesn't look like it because they they look like the evolutions of the characters from Exer. Yeah. Like Kai looks like still looks like the King Kai, but he has a different outfit. He's he's changed up a bit. Soul still looks like the the same big burly soul they use in in the Exer game. So it seems like this is somehow a continuation. There has not been story trailers. So I don't know what's going on with the story, but mechanics wise, it looks like they're expanding on what they put in. They put in uh, what they put in in the last time. Um, the the wall bounce system. The, the the there's a system with the 
where you clash and it sparks like this emergency thing where whoever gets the next hit gets guaranteed criticals and you could just kill people like like there's some weird some really in-depth stuff in there they show like straight stage transitions during combat which looks pretty cool so you got a little bit of that injustice that that dragon ball flair that they did because remember this is arc system works and they are the ones responsible for uh dragon ball fighters at least graphically i don't know how much of the technical side came from them like who who's the ones doing the, the engine like fighting wise but i know they are responsible for how that game looks and it is gorgeous yeah, that looks gorgeous on the switch and they, they cut down a lot of things on the switch yes so they are, they have mastered what they want to do with their art style and again you saw it this yeah. is an evolution of the last game style which essentially is like one came before so xr came before dragon ball yeah. which was one evolution of their style because before this guilty gear did not look like that yeah it did true. not look like a, a living cartoon it was good looking it had very good sprite work and even guilty gear 2 it had a stylistic thing going for it yeah but it was not this yeah and they meant they went to dragon ball fighters and that is where they i want to say that's where they perfected their craft because that game looks like an anime yeah it looks like just it, like right off the tv it does everything. You everything. know what? That was like the first like Dragon Ball Z game that I ever played that felt like I was playing the cartoon. Mm. I can like, see straight out felt like I was playing the cartoon. I can see that because, to be honest, Dragon Ball hasn't had the best games without the commercial breaks. <laughs> and without the bad tsunami. <laughs> Next time on Dragon Ball Z. Ball Z. Yes. Goku oh, will stare for another hour while charging up. Oh man, I saw some Dragon Ball clips today, and Vegeta was getting pissed off, and I was getting uncomfortable with how long it took for him to react. <laughs> <laughs> it was just him. It was a thing from Dragon Ball Super. I'm not sure if you saw it. It's Beerus smacks Bulma. Yeah, and it's I remember that. A rage. Yeah. But if you watch that clip, it's three minutes. Bulma got slapped maybe a minute in. It took a minute for for Vegeta to stop being to stop being a trope. Yeah. She was literally like, oh. Uh, 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 uh. It still has that. That's yeah. kind of the thing I don't remember about yeah. watching Dragon. And then <laughs> just I, like I, Jesus. I gotta you know? I gotta finish that damn super series. I, I was up to in, I was in the sixties, I think, and then I just stopped paying attention. And I was going through it. I was enjoying it. it. Just I just lost track of it. Yeah, I could I can see it, yeah. but definitely that's one of those things that it, it kind of it reminded me. Oh, this is why I don't really watch Dragon Ball so much. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, but that being said, about Arc System Works, that was the game where they refined their work. They, if you want to say, mastered it. Yeah. This is them exceeding beyond. Okay. Like that trailer for the next Guilty Gear, it's it just looks like an anime. It just looks like it's its own contained thing, but even when they're just standing there and it's still in quote unquote fighting game mode, yeah. still looks still looks like something I've never seen before. It's no, still amazing. It's a beautiful game. Like, and that I transition from the supers, cause uh Shout out to uh, Maximilian, dude, if you check out his YouTube video where he went through it in English. Because, you know, a lot of these games, Tokyo Game Show did not really have it's in Tokyo. native <laughs> English speakers <laughs> presenting things for us to, to know. You have to get it secondhand from the, you know, game spots, the IGNs and whatnot. Yeah. But to get the best feel for everything, you should watch the Japanese presentations first yeah. and then go back. Uh, get an interpretation. No. Yes. Yeah. So you can get the, you can basically get the the facts first, and then have somebody break it down individually to you, so you know what you exactly you saw when. That helps. Yeah. So, Maximilian did a video actually breaking down both things that I just talked about: the Final Fantasy presentation, both yeah. arts, and also Guilty Gear. And the cool thing was he's he showed frame by because he did this for the last the first initial trailer this is the second guilty gear trailer he broke it down literally 
frame by frame. And it's funny because as he was doing this, he was mentioning this is exactly what they're doing on presentation, but I already did this for the last video. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. That's how into this the fans are. They're breaking down the game frame by frame and it's not even out yet. Like that's how that's how good it looks, dude. It's just got people baffled, mystified, like, yo, what is this magic? This game is amazing. Um, but that being said, there's so much being put into it that wasn't there before. Cause like the he show footage of the first game, um, and that was like maybe it's 2019. I think Kill to Cure XR came out in 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Or yeah. 20 because I I'm forgetting because these consoles are old. <laughs> They're actually, they're actually starting to feel old. Yeah. Um, but let me let me get the actual date. I don't want to. Um, when the hell did Guilty Gear XR come out? Let's see. Twenty fourteen. See, it's actually oh, wow. older than I yeah. thought. Wow. Um, the expansion I think was two years ago. Was it? I mean, twenty sixteen. Yeah. Cause so Dragon Ball was like last uh, two years ago. Dragon Ball was two years ago. Yeah. So that being said, um, sorry, make sure I get this information correct. So, with all that being said, from the first game to this game, is almost a completely different, like, set of perspectives they're using. It's like it's it's way more animation that they're using for the same things. So bad guys initial super and they do Kai. His initial super, his because they usually they have two supers. Yeah. Um, and frame by frame, you just see the detail and the work and the camera angles they put in there, and it's just like how they came up with the idea to make 3D models look like this, where it doesn't, it kind of fucks you up because this is like, it's not 2D, but yeah. it looks 2D. It's like, how do you give 360 degree perspective to a 2D object? They do it and it looks amazing. Yeah. So it's just, oh my goodness, man, TGS this year, they had, they had a lot of things that came out, but these gems, like this Guilty Gear, this Final Fantasy, uh, there was one of them, they, they showed a Tales game. Like they, it wasn't a big deal, but like I'm a Tales fan. So yeah. God, they showed some, and, and not even to mention, the Death Stranding thing, which I, I admit I have not sat down and had it explained to me when I watched. <laughs> I yeah. need it explained. <laughs> because it was Norman Reedus in a room and they showed the customization and his hat. Um, and it's, it's so much in-depth customization. And you can kind of see... You can kind of see where it comes from from the last i think they might be using an evolution of the last engine they use for five yeah so you'll get a lot of norman reader sitting down because in the room he's sitting in his in i guess his bed he's sitting down he has idle animations he turns to the camera and winks at you he does like a not a dab but he can turn and point at stuff on the wall behind him he puts a hat on and he he like he poses and looks cool with his shades on. He can wash his face when it gets dirty. He could like stick his tongue out in the in the mirror in the bathroom. Like there's so much detail and, and just animations put in that game. Forget about the thing that he pees in the world, which is weird. And a little mushroom just shows up in the world in the world to show other players where you peed. It's just so what is that? Cause you know what are you like, doing? It's like well, brown Strowman's. Uh... Oh, the poop map. <laughs> I love that. I pooped it. Yeah, so it's it's a lot of detail in that game that I don't quite understand what it's about. Because, again, I watched the Japanese presentation and I'll get the information later. But, like, just so much stuff that came out of TGS this year. Yeah. That's just like, damn, yo, Japanese de game development, they still killing it, man. Yeah. They still killing it. Yeah. So it's good to see a lot of games coming a lot of games coming it's, and it's the last supposedly the last year for these consoles they were saying 2020 is going to be the debut of every system yeah. but still nothing dude, still haven't seen anything yet that's true 
but, but like, like the dude, way they're using these consoles now is like oh shit like where is it gonna go next exactly and i'm that's, that's what has me has me excited about the future for the games because i know i know there's gonna be performance issues on some of this stuff yeah i know it is yeah that's a sad fact because they, they're being super ambitious too like yeah. But I think that's where you have to be right now, especially because in, in the world of games that are like are becoming like very repetitive with like, uh, all the creeds they had to redo everything and like the games like Fortnite like are more the, the higher points and things. You, you have to go outside the box now to make a game and to get a crowd off the game because I I think they're getting really creative with it and I'm I'm I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm- I'm happy to see the reins taken off of him so that we can finally see, you know, the answer to the question, was it Konami and Metal Gear that made Kojima seem like such a genius? Because they kept him within their constraints. Yeah. And I want to see if you let him do what he wants to do unfiltered, how good will it be? Yeah. Because I'll be honest, Metal Gear Solid Five, for all of its issues that, that that came to light in the gaming press, yeah, about how horrible Konami was at the end of the days when he was there, how they treated him and his team, yeah. like all types of bad stuff that they, that that came out, right? Yeah, and they still managed to make a game that, to me, is the best playing Metal Gear Solid. Not the best story, because it's like you could tell it was unfinished. This piece is missing. Yeah, but. There is no Metal Gear Solid game that plays better than Metal Gear 5. Yeah. That sh- has so much nuance, so many details. It's gorgeous. It doesn't have gameplay hiccups either. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. So I, I want to know. I'm you guilty. Know? I, have, I, I own it and never played it. You should. You should. There's nothing really bad about it. Like for a first time, if you don't yeah. have this, this oh my god Kojima love in you, like, cause that that would make you not like it. Yeah, just no, to I, have that information in your head that they fucked him on that game. Yeah, it made a lot of people just not like it. It was like, I this is not his true vision. They yeah. they put they made him put multiplayer in that game, some yeah. type of multiplayer thing that was like this doesn't make sense. Yeah, and, like, and oh, we need to make money. <laughs> <laughs> like we need to make money though. That's, yeah, that's the thing. And then you see they fucking went ahead and shit on the legacy of the game by making Metal Gear Survive. Yeah. We don't know about that. Which <laughs> unfortunately, and this brings me to another thing from Tokyo Game Show. The the reveal of the gameplay for the new Resident Evil game, the spin-off. Yeah. Um it's what is it called? Project Survive? No, Project, Project Resistance. Resistance. Yes. It looks like a take on Left 4 Dead kind of feel. Yes. Uh, the four players all teaming up and, and whatnot. It looks, it doesn't look as pretty as Resident Evil 2. It looks yeah, like the same real, gameplay, but it doesn't look as pretty. But uh, my hope is it's actually using that engine. Yeah. Because I see Mr. Rex and he was, he's literally the same model. Yeah. But the character models of the new uh, survivors, they do not look like in game. Yeah. They do not look anywhere near as good as Leon or Claire looks. I can see from like screenshots now. Yeah. They don't look as detailed. But it looks like it's gonna be like I, I have a feeling it might not be like us like one of those sixty dollar games to play. I could see that. I could see it being a, like an episodic kinda thing with online, kinda like a apex in in somewhat in that way. You know what it reminds me of very much? And I haven't played these games, so I can't yeah. really criticize them. Oh, Scott Sina. He doesn't want me to talk about yeah. Resident Evil. Um, it reminds me a lot of Friday the 13th. Yeah, something like that. I, I can see it. Hey, you know what? If you really think about it, like, well, I, I see it more as a Left 4 Dead version of it because um, Luigi is all the players against Jason and one player is Jason kind of thing. This one, like, I think it's going to be the four core players and it's going to be like a survival kind of thing. But I think it's going to be in that, the, the way that game is presented and how it, it, how it, how it is. I think that's what's going to be Resident Evil, the new Resident Evil game going to be. Well, okay. To, did you see the trailer for it? Yeah. 
uh if you look at the end it it has the the hook from fire the 13th yeah one it's it's something called asynchronous multiplayer okay where it's four against one oh, one oh. player okay. is gonna be the commander of the monsters oh, okay so you know what then yeah it's gonna be the same and so here's two things they show in the trailer one it's there's there's two enemies that you can control yeah the rest is you um set traps and you look through the cameras about what's going on in the facility so you can stop the you can stop the progress okay so that's the first thing the second thing is where it really comes into what i what i say is basically friday the 13th mode is the characters you control are going to be uh the aggressors to stop the progress like jason was yeah okay so one of them you can control mr x which okay. is literally like okay well there you can you, he's he's the one-to-one comparison to jason yeah but to a lesser extent you will control the zombies yeah so it you, makes sense you can choose to jump into a zombie basically yeah. All right, so, so it's gonna be very similar to that. So I think the the the, the, the selling point of that game is gonna be that it's gonna be something uh, very similar. I hope, to that. I hope I will say I hope for the vision they want that the net code is good. Yeah, if because I know I shit. It, yeah. it can it can be a runaway success. Yeah, because look at Friday the Thirteenth. It, it's not the greatest game, but yo, it got a fucking crowd. <laughs> People love it. Yeah, it People was love fun. It. I played it a little bit. It was fun. I just can't get into it. Like, I, I, I have I have very low patience in certain games like that. So, uh, like, I'll play it. I'll be like, I eh, have fun. I'll play for like two or three games. And I'll go, okay, I'm done with this. Yeah. Move on. Next game. Also, from what it says on the um, on the wiki for it, yeah. it's made by Capcom. So, it's not an American developer. So, Capcom. like, before I told you, I was more skeptical because I thought it was a Western developer. Yeah. Apparently it's not. So I'm willing to work with them on this one. So I, see where it goes. I can see it going into that bandwagon of being that the survival horror down the game as in uh, Death by Night and uh, J- uh, the Friday yeah, Death by Night. Yeah, yeah. So I can see in, in very sense, especially because those games are really popular right now. Um, can we get Up Up Down Down Jump Scare again with that game? Oh. Yes. I, I, yo, I literally, like my buddy Mike, uh, aka Nutso, shout out to him. I literally got him to watch Up Up Down Down because of the jump scares. Oh, because he laughed nice. so hard at the jump scares. Was a, I think it was Xavier and Tyler Breeze doing them. And, what were uh, they playing? They were playing. Uh, Fire they were playing uh... Fuck, I forgot the name of the game. It's an old game. It came out a couple of years ago. I, I can't really think about it. Was it a first um, person? No, it was like one of those group games. But they also did like Five Nights at Freddy and things like that too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So they probably play Outlast or something. Outlast. That's there good. That's, that's, that's the game. Called it. Yeah. They did Outlast and then they did Fire Nights of Freddy and shit like that. And the reactions were hilarious. Like you got a really good laugh at it, especially him and and, and Breeze playing with each other. And it was fun. Um, but yeah, I can see that Resident Evil being that kind of style because I know there's a there there is plans for Resident Evil Seven or Eight. It would be Eight. Yeah, the next one. Next yeah, because there will be there is a, there is talks already of Resident Evil coming. I think it's been two years. I think it's gonna be the next console. I don't think it's gonna be on this console. I I think the the next and last game before the next console is probably gonna be Resident Evil Three Remake. Yeah, I didn't like that one that much. You didn't like three? It was alright. I like Nemesis. I, I, yeah, I think I, most I wasn't like crazy. I wasn't crazy about that game though. Like I I wasn't. I think two, but then again, um, the way they did two and the way they remade it, uh, I'd be probably more interested in just seeing what they do with it. Yeah, me too. And because I know that game has mechanical differences from the original, yeah. I want to see how they implement, or if they even do, how they implement Jill's Dodge feature. That yeah. was a major part of it. Like, she had the whole combining ammunition yeah. to make more pop ammunition. She had the, the custom guns. She had more custom guns because you can make like the spinning shotgun that was like pretty cool it wasn't as strong as like a certain other one but like there was a lot of they had the mind thrower that could like fly around and attach itself to, to enemies and be generally useless yeah <laughs> um but that game tried for some stuff yeah and it didn't fail which was good because obviously there's more resident evils after that but i don't think it was like the breakout success that two was but it has its fans because it 
I like it, but yeah, I don't like it as much as two. Yeah. Story wise, story wise, it, it's like the because it, it's in the sense of like five, well, five and three. Those are the ones that it has its fan base, but weren't the popular ones. Yeah, I know. Well, I don't know about five. five I don't know how people like five. Five had so much hate initially with the Africans thing. Oh, you're yeah. killing black people. And it had the initial thing of, oh, it's co-op, so it's easy. And it had the thing where Sheva's a stupid AI companion if you yeah. don't play co-op. And it had, oh, man, this is really just a different RE4. Then yeah. then you look at the stuff of the game and it's through the roof. Yeah, It's one of the most bought Resident Evil games. Yeah, And you know what's even sadder? Resident Evil 6, which is an objectively the worst selling game. One. It's one of the highest selling. I think uh, part two beat it out. I'm not sure. I, I'm not. I don't. I can't say if I know for sure. I'll no, I, up. I think I think part two did beat it out. Let's see. Uh, the remake of part two. I think seven sold well too. Yeah, it did. Yeah. But I think yeah, because I remember six being very popular. Like. Oh no. No. I thought. I thought. No. 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 I thought. I thought it said 12 million for Resident Evil 6. I was about to say, please don't tell me that shit. <laughs> oh my God. Don't say yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, I really want to see this. Oh my God, it is Resident Evil 6. Yeah. It's, no, it's, it's, no, no. All right. Whew. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Uh, in order of, oh, but see, it takes into account. Oh my God. All right, so hold on to your to your butt cheeks. They don't really have them separated. They have Capcom's top ten selling uh, ten best selling games of all time. Okay. And this is a uh, as of oh this is from May, but this is of this year, May of this year, right? Number one, Monster Hunter World. And at the time, it was eleven point nine. It was eleven point nine. Monster Hunter has gone on to sell over thirteen million. Yeah. Um. Resident Evil 5 is the second is the number one highest selling Resident Evil game. People hate it. 7.4 million people bought it. Yeah. And that's the number two highest selling Capcom game of everything. So people was bitching. People <laughs> bought that game. Uh, Resident Evil 6 is right under it. 7.2. Yeah. Jesus, dude. And then it's not even close. The next one is Street Fighter 2. Yeah. 6.3. Yo. Resident Evil 7. Okay, Resident Evil 7 is close. 6.1. Yeah. Resident Evil 2, the 1998 game, is 4.96. Uh, so that's about 5. Monster Hunter Freedom 3. Yeah. Which. Freedom 3. I don't know if they came out in America. Freedom 3. Wow. 4.9. That's number seven, Monster Hunter at uh, Cross, which did not come out in America because that's Generations in America is not Cross. Yeah. They they are they both have different actual titles. Monster Hunter Cross is four point three, Monster Hunter Four Ultimate is four point two, and Monster Hunter Four is four point one. So actually, Monster Hunter just fucking beats everything. But yeah, man, Resident Evil Five and Six are the top two. So, it, it's show. really far. Shame on yourselves. Damn. <laughs> but you Damn gotta shit. remember that that was at the height of, and I want to say this was probably at the height of video games popularity. The Xbox 360 and PS3 probably sold more games than any other system so far. Yeah. Except for counting Monster Hunter World. Yeah. Because that's a that's 13 million units, dude. That's like approaching grant that for like one system that's that's a lot it's a lot you want to know something you want to know one one number i would like to see mm -hmm. and this would be probably more on gamestop and maybe any other used games thing as much as resident evil 6 sold i want to see how much people sold it back the next week i could imagine because i i'll tell you this one i i think I think we had. I think that was one of the most games we had as a used game within the, the three weeks that it came out. Okay. When I when I worked on the store, like okay. that shit. That, 
we had so many cases of Resident Evil 6 that we had to put half of them in the side because it was it took all the space. I'll put it, that's, that's, that was during the time when they put all the all the used cases up on the shelves. Hmm. Let's hmm. see. Okay. I was trying to get a comparison so you can get a feel for what those games sold and you compare it to now because they don't really have a, a list for xbox 360 going into yeah. 2019 i think the latest one is 2017 they have yeah and now everything is physical too they don't go digital they don't count digital either yeah back in back then they did not no they still don't count digital digital uh they'll have a separate some some games they count it unfortunately they'll try to sneak that in there most of them uh they'll say it's like physical copy only but uh, unfortunately the list doesn't yeah. doesn't delineate yep, yep. but like gta 5 was 17. yeah, yeah. Oh, GTA monster hunter so you no know, that was out of like 2000 or something like that was like 2016 Man, or something gta oh. 5 has not left the top 10 in the last like six years <laughs> yeah yeah i can imagine that that game has not moved like it moved in that top 10 but it has not left that top 10 in the last probably That's six not... seven years okay i'll give you i'll give you a comparison and this is weird yeah connect adventures is the number one highest selling video game <laughs> yeah because it was like two cents of the 360 because it it technically sold 21.78 million copies yeah but we're gonna skip we're gonna go to gta which is 16.7 so yeah. for comparison next next is modern warfare 3 which is 14.72 yeah. so for comparison's sake already monster hunter is is almost up to that grant that that call of duty 3 like yeah. dude this banana i would have never thought in a million years you would ever hear a monster hunter game selling that much yeah that's bananas. Yeah, it's a popular game. I think once it went on the PS4, it it it, be, it became a, a a name now. I think it had to go on that main console to get that recognition, though. Even though the game probably was great before, way before it, but it needed that big system game to really signify itself as as a game kind of. Thing. Uh, no, I don't. Shoot. It yeah. it. It was being held out of people's hands. Exactly. By being on Nintendo. Exactly. Because they I don't know if, Well PSA, anybody listening, I don't yeah. I don't know if it's public knowledge anymore. Because it was a while ago. This was back in the Wii. But Nintendo had secured an exclusive an exclusivity deal back then. Yeah. For the Monster Hunter games, for three games. That's why they had literally Monster Hunter Three. Then they had the American uh, the portable versions of the game yeah which was for uh for you and generation and they were all locked to exclusively to nintendo consoles and then they made the switch version of the game and i think that was the last game in the in the deal yeah. because there was no there was no current monster hunter currently being made for that game for that system because well, there, really there were the rumors about world but I wouldn't want to play that unless I knew that they were taking the time to, to iron out the details. Yeah. The, the problems that World still has, even on these consoles, because I'll be honest with you, the loading times are can be a bit unbearable sometimes. Yeah. And I know the PC version is basically the ultimate way to play the game. Okay. So I would not want it to be on the, the Switch unless they gave it their best effort to eliminate that problem because i can see people getting pissed off yeah having to, having to load forever and then having any type of uh performance issues on top of that yeah. i wouldn't want that you know what i mean yeah. hearing about how mk11 on the, on the switch is not perform well yeah thinking about how a lot of really high profile games that they released that were ports yeah that don't pro it, it started to remind me of the wii yeah uh you know one that surprised me was skyrim yeah, but that's like a 360 game. Yeah, that's true. Like um, Witcher coming out. We're gonna see how well that go. That's... I heard it's not good. I yeah. heard the Witcher three, yeah. like early report, like it's not as good as it could be. But it it doesn't look bad. That's the other thing. Yeah. But there's another recent game. Um, 
even Bloodstain, yeah, not graphically intensive, does not perform as well on the on the Switch. Oh, okay. I said, it, I heard it has hitches on PS4, which is like, what? The fuck out of here. So, like, there's, I feel, I'm starting to feel some type of way about these ports going to Switch. I, I don't want people porting bad stuff to that system. Yeah. Like, I don't like that. I get that you want to put all games in everybody's hands. Don't do that to people. Not everything. Not every game needs a re- again another release. I seriously don't. And it's just not a bad port, you know. Yeah. So, but um, I'm looking be- forward. I'm actually I'm looking forward to Link's Awakening. That's the game I'm looking forward to. Oh yeah, that's that should be awesome. I'm on jury duty that weekend too. That week too, so I'm actually excited because Ooh, okay. I get to sit down and actually play it in the fucking court. <laughs> <laughs> it comes out the same week I'm on jury duty. I'm like, yes. Nice. Some time to relax. Exactly. And it gives me days that I don't have to go to work. I, I, I can just go and sleep. Tranquilo. I get paid full for jury duty. I don't mind oh. doing it. I really do not mind jury duty. I don't mind it if it lasts two weeks or less. Yeah. If it lasts a month, I don't know how I would feel, man. Have you ever, have you ever been called for a big case? Yeah. I, the longest I stood was about a month. How'd you find that? Was that it wasn't bad? Going? It wasn't bad because my job pays, so I get paid no matter what of of my regular paycheck. So I'm not losing out on anything. No, but how was your experience? Like I don't. Um, I did. Um, I don't think I could. Yeah, I don't think I could say it on. <laughs> oh no, 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 that's right. But yeah, because right. it was like a it was a attempted murder case and shit. Right. That's but right. yeah, um, it, it was about a month long. Uh, pretty much. It was a lot of things going on. Um, it was attempted murder. They had like, a crackhead witness and things like that. It was a lot oh, of things. It was, it, was, it, was, it was lit, is what you're trying to tell me. Yeah. He was sitting there, and my friend was like, and I saw yeah. he was on a corner. Yeah. And... So the funniest shit was uh, uh, one thing I'll say is the funniest shit was was um, there's a chicken place, a uh, famous chicken place in Harlem. Uh, probably, close, probably a little further up than you. Um, I don't know the name of it, but I know the cook was there, and he was one of the the witnesses of this okay. place. So he pretty much was telling all oh, this is the time when they were there and shit like that. Uh, anyway, while during the time of the trial, I would watch Food Network, and he was on Food Network, and I was like, "Oh shit, that's the guy that's a, a bitch." <laughs> it wasn't Bobby Flay, was it? Nah, it was. Uh, it was just they were talking about his his his, his restaurant. It's in Harlem. It's like a it's famous for his fried chicken and shit. Not Sylvia's. This is another place. Okay. okay. I don't know the name of it, but it's in, it's more in the deeper region. Deep. It's further than where you're at. Further up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it happened further up, like going around like polo grounds area, kind of. Ah, uh, yeah. understand. I got you. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So I I really don't mind it. I, I, do, I really don't. I find them inter- I find it actually really interesting. So it's like, all right, I'll stay. Whatever. Oh, well, I could imagine on. it would be even more relaxing for the parts where you have break when you have your switch. Yeah, exactly. I have my switch. I play my game. Yo, last time I had it, I had I had, I had Skyrim. I was playing Skyrim. That's when I actually uh, finished Skyrim. <laughs> makes that, oh, that makes it even better. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because there was times we had long ass waits, and it was like, fuck it, play. Mm-hmm. So my mm-hmm. battery dies. Um, the new system comes out then in the month. I um, saw a hands-on. Yeah. If you want to check it out, um, CNET. Okay. They did one. There's a guy. He he's usually on the giant bombcast. His name is yeah. Jeff Bacalar, and he works for it. And he 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 gave a pretty comprehensive. It's very short, but it's to the point. Yeah. Why would you want to? Why would you want this? If these and he basically goes through. If these changes are things that appeal to you, you should get this. Yeah. If you are a family that already has a switch and you have children, and you know one is the house switch, yes, you should get this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's a cheap alternative. It seems to be made more durable. That he was showing off the feel of it. Yeah, it has like a tactile, almost grit to it. Okay, where it's not like smooth like regular plastic or it's like a phone case almost. Okay, certain phone cases where they have like uh, it has a texture to it. Okay. So it's like it's interesting. It feels different. It's very, very light, like much lighter than the Switch already is, which he said was it surprised him. I'm actually um, considering it because I get tired of fucking holding the Switch. The Switch is pretty heavy for a handheld. Like after a while, uh, you holding okay. it, it, that shit like gives it cramps your hands. So it's I'm not ergonomically 
correct for your hand too and they yeah. were mentioning that did you see the new thing about the the pat there was news about a patent for a new controller yeah the bent controllers yeah, the yeah nintendo, the yeah. nintendo has a habit of doing that all the time though they make random controllers and they never see the light of day even I, though they might be a good idea oh i got you i they, hope i hope they do something because i'll be honest for the past few systems and i'm counting from the wii u to the wii u 3ds to the switch ergonomically for holding this the console yeah not that great no. switch was mm, it, it didn't hurt my hands as much 3ds oh that hurt yeah. my hands yeah it really did yeah like the, the, for some reason the edges around but it yeah. felt like i was holding glass in my hands after a while it was yeah it hurts especially if you have like long game sessions kind of thing I'm yeah, Monster that, Hunter. Yeah, that's my thing with the Switch. Like, if I have a long game session and shit like that, it's just heavy after a while. Like, it has weight to it. So, if the, the other one is, like, lighter, is that, is, like, say for instance, it's as light as, like, a, th- a 3DS, but it's, as the, it's, like, almost as size as a Switch, I may consider getting it. Just the fact that I'll have one just to go and leave one at home. Uh, the one that interests me the most color-wise is, like, the gun gunmetal one. It's, it's like, gray. a dark uh, gray. Yeah. yeah. That looks that one, pretty cool. That one looks cool. The turquoise one is not that bad. I I, I wait till there's more colors though. I think in Japan that's the most popular color. Yeah, turquoise. Um, like a red. Like a nice but it looks good. And then also, I that think that's gonna have a long. I'm not sure if it's gonna have that crazy long battery life though. Yeah, uh, it has a better battery life than the original one. But it's gonna have that real that real real long one, like that new. It's supposed to go five to six hours. Okay, because that new one is nine. And I'm like, that's crazy for a handheld. That's what? The, the new one's nine. The new one with the same, pa- with a different box. Yeah, it's it's nine, nine hours. Shit, mine's only last three. So yeah, that's, that's the one a, they that's taste is bananas. Right <laughs> yeah, I, so. I, I might have to trade mine's in and then get a fucking new one. You did you know that you hear about the the stories that if you called Nintendo customer service like right when it was announced and was on store shelves, you yeah. could have got it replaced by a customer service rep. And it's in those sent a memo, an internal memo to stop it. That's crazy. Wow. I love that that happened. I should have done that shit. I should have fucked. Honestly, I should have. You know what? I had to see when my 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 insurance expire. Ah, uh, gotcha. I can go fucking. Hey, I'm returning this shit. Give me another one. <laughs> new one. <laughs> yeah. That new juice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right. Yeah. Next Anything week I'll have uh, Borderlands Three. I'll do a little review of uh-huh. Borderlands Three. I'll yeah. try to get more into the game, but I did pick it up. Uh, you can follow me on this channel, and I'll probably be doing more live streams of Borderlands Three once I finish Yakuza Zero, which I'm nice. very close to finishing. Nice. I know there's a lot of controversy surrounding that game because of the people involved in the company Gearbox. Yeah. But what I have to say to that is support game development. Yeah. Those guys who worked on that game did nothing wrong. Yeah. Don't. I saw mad people saying, "I'm not gonna buy this game because of Randy Pitchford. I'm not gonna buy this game because of 2K." Oh, sure. Don't punish the people that sat in those offices and literally put years of their lives on the line to make the game. Don't your, do that. It's not their fault. Your sixty dollars is not that big to affect your job. But it's just like don't don't hurt don't hurt their their pockets or put their company on 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 blast for you know the work that they put into that game yeah because some asshole doesn't know how to you know keep his mouth shut yeah you know what i mean like it gotta be smarter than that you have to sure it's true so enjoy the game like on one hand people be like yo man i don't want my game that was crunching Mm -hmm. well they just worked on the game for you and now you're gonna say fuck you because of their boss but that ain't got nothing to do with him. He was sitting in the office doing all the man hours that you were protesting that you don't want him to do. You care about his well-being, right? Well, feed his family. Yeah. Shut the fuck up and feed his family. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Tell you want to make a you want to make your make your voice heard. Complain to Gearbox directly about Randy Pitchford. Yeah. Or complain to Two K about their practices where they intimidate people for leaking shit. Yeah. Don't sit there on social media trying to be a champion and a hero talking about i'm going to boycott this game and randy pitch is going to light up a hundred dollar bill and smoke it because yep. he doesn't give it and you should not be leaking shit anyway yeah this is true 
and the way they do it, the way they did it, I hear there's a little bit of people might be on the on the wrong side of the history when it comes to that one. It's like you know, that guy was getting something from somewhere. Yeah. And they was trying to find out. I'm sorry, you getting un unsolicited information about a product that's not out. I don't know if I can fuck with you. Yeah, exactly. and be like, yeah, I'm a rob with my man's right here who was getting stolen information. Yeah. What? Nah. Nah. <laughs> he deserves. You deserve to get a knock on the door and be like, yo, where you get that information from, son? Exactly. That's Rest what I'm up, just yeah. saying. Stop. I'm just saying. Stop stealing people's shit. No stealing. <laughs> We just talked about emulators. If Nintendo rolled up to my crib and was like, "Yo, I heard you, uh, I heard you talk about emulators, dog." We got recorded evidence. You talking about emulators, dog? What's, what's, what's good? Well, they outside. Yo, we gotta go. All right, we gotta cut this podcast short. No, that PC down toilet. <laughs> the hard drive. So Mario hey, you comes know, into your house I, with a fucking plunger. Oh my god! Why does my plunger got an M on it? <laughs> fucking knock on your door like oh shit you're bigger than i thought oh damn it's, it's, it's the actual voice actor yeah it's not me mario. charles martin hey it's mario what's up motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> i hear you've been uh, stealing my shit taking food out of my family's mouth haha <laughs> oh. sing with the sing with the fishes motherfucker <laughs> it's all fucking Blue shell, you That's it. It's oh, over. Yeah. That's it. Still all right, set. Shit. And then so, he begs you and leaves. If you take anything away from this episode of the It Gets Better, I Swear podcast, is don't be upset when you steal from Mario. He comes to collect. He don't come to collect. He wants his. He wants his money. Them yeah. coins, they yeah. real to him. Yeah, yeah. So remember that <laughs> shit. All right, Mark, yeah, you got man. anything else? Uh, that is it. That's all I got, man. All right, so thank you for listening to another episode of the It Gets Better Right Square podcast. Make sure you follow us on all of our places on the internet. We are on social media, on Twitter, uh, Instagram, and we have a Facebook group. Uh, make sure you check out the SoundCloud where all of these go. Uh, make sure you check out the YouTube where the episode also goes. And make sure you check out the Tumblr and the WordPress because you'll find these episodes there as well. Um, that's it. Where you at, Mark? All right, you can follow me on this channel. We do uh, right now. We're doing Yakuza Zero and Borderlands Three. Uh, I have a schedule up for this week uh, later on today. Mm-hmm. Um, follow us on, on uh, SoundCloud, Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter, and uh, yeah, all Mark with the mic. And follow our Facebook book of the Wrestling Babble and. Resec link. Uh, we'll be running the live polls on during WWE Class of Champions tonight, so you can vote who wins and loses and be yep, a part yep. of the conversation. Um, always remember, follow the jinkies. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. From sandwiches in the chair. Oh, to the head? Don't do it. Don't do it. They're gonna be like, no, you can't do that. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not taking off. <laughs> <laughs> I hit him in the head if I want. He told me to do it. He paid me to hit him. Oh, yes. And uh, Disney Plus has all Disney Afternoon. So do it. Watch do it. it. Also, yeah. shout out to Connor Chan TV. Oscar's amazing. Yes. Watch her, I love, I watch love her, her play. Her. Watch her play the flute. The, oh, excuse me. The recorder. She did. She did the, the bongo game today. Uh, fucking, uh, she she sucked really saw... bad at it, but it was great. She's, she's funny. I love Oscar. Yeah. yeah. Oscar's Before amazing. Oscar. Connor Chan TV, y'all. Yes. Take it out. Put the link up. Yep, yep. Peace out. Later. Peace.